Hello and welcome to Cutter Farms. We're back with another episode of Tahitian County and today we're going to be trying to wrap up the harvest on this big field that we've started with our uh, corn harvest. We've got two harvesters going here and as you can see we've almost got our first full grain cart off of this field. I am trying to completely fill this up just out of the fun of it I want to see a full grain cart here uh, so we're gonna wait for these uh, combine to get turned around and I'm gonna unload him on the way down oh it looks like we've gotten too close oh, he was faking us out I thought he was waiting for us but apparently not I'll let him get turned around and we'll jump in here I've got our tillage working over on our soybean stubble we're running the high-speed disc through it right now and covering a decent amount of acres uh, he shouldn't take too long getting through that and then after we get these combines moving I'm gonna have to get our plow out and hopefully uh, knock out this corn ground I don't know if the combine driver got confused and is waiting on me to get out of the way now or what is going on with him he drove off into the fence this has not been a problem for us up until now so apologies here folks we're gonna just figure this out manually it's uh, one of those things you think everything's working great and then all of a sudden not so much we're going to spin around here I'm gonna try and catch up with the other tractor here I guess I could have just waited and taken him on the way back up I'm not sure how full he is though so we're gonna spin on in here I can't turn too tight with this uh, grain cart it has a lot of pull now that it's getting full so we've got to just uh, take it easy it looks like I should be able to turn a little tighter than I am though it uh, is a little unfortunate there but we're we're getting there and we're not gonna catch up by the time we get to the end row all of that uh, spinning around for no real benefits maybe oh wow we can't stop with this much corn in here that's impressive I did not anticipate that but I should have I really should have the amount of mass we've got in here from all this corn is got to be astronomical I don't even know how many pounds the corn would weigh that's a lot we're at almost 2500 bushels though so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, try and get out of the way here I'm just all kinds of in the way of this guy so while I wait for those two combines to cut through the next section here, we're going to go ahead and check on our tillage. And as expected here, he is off into the weeds. I don't know what happened, but it seems like course play decided all at the same time for all of our workers to get confused and drive off into who knows where it was. Uh, this one and the combine both seem to have gotten confused about the same time there. So I don't know if there was a temporary glitch or what happened, but we are going to fix it. And I'm just looking at the crazy headland bit. I, I seem to remember when we were generating the course thinking, why is it trying to do these little tiny up down rows when uh, the headland count is going to take care of this whole area a little bit of finagling here but it usually isn't this difficult I feel like lately though I've had more issues than not but I think this guy is going to be able to figure this all out at this point so we're going to go ahead and let him do his thing and I'm going to grab the 8RX next and the thought being here is that I can use this to run our other tillage equipment we don't necessarily need to buy a dedicated tractor for each implement. We can reuse a tractor for multiple jobs on the farm. And this should have more than enough horsepower to pull this uh, chisel plow. And I'm going to run this straight out to our cornfield that's uh, right out behind the farm here checking my mirrors to make sure we're getting through the garage out the shed doors I should say now this plow is significantly 
oversized for some of these smaller fields, but that's okay. We're going to get through them pretty quickly. We've already mulched them with the way that our header worked, which is really cool. I like that feature a lot. Uh, so I'm looking forward now to hitting this with the plowing requirement. And I think for this bigger field, we haven't done this yet. Uh, I want to actually try course play on this field because we're, we've been avoiding it because it's such an awkwardly shaped field. But I think it's time to see if we're going to be able to handle this long part down on the bottom here or not. Uh, because I want to know. And this will be the best way to do that. We're going to do two headland passes with this giant uh, implement. And it should work. It, there's a little bit of shenanigans down there, but it shouldn't be too bad, to be honest. So let's go ahead and fire him off. We're going to find out. And uh, I'm surprised. I didn't think it'd actually take uh, 26 minutes to do this field. So that's uh, a surprise, but not too bad. We should be good to go. I'm kind of curious. We're getting really close to this fence. But it does look like it's plowing up dirt that far, so... We'll let it go. Um, I don't know why. It almost looks like it's getting rid of some of the grass on the edge there. Like, I'm just uh, concerned uh, that we're, we've got the plow mode turned on on this or something. But I don't think we do. Also curious to see how this thing is going to handle the sharp turn. I think it's going to try and back up and back into this corner here. Which is what I'd like it to do with an implement like this. It is. Oh, look at that. With our tillage equipment on the way, we're going to hop back over here into the grain cart. I think that these combines should be uh, turning into the short rows here again. At least this one will. The other one might have to go down the length of the field before he gets back over here. I'm kind of curious to see how this works out. Um, and maybe he's going to go all the way to the end before he comes back up here. I'm not really sure. This is a very confusing part of the field but I'm expecting him to come back up here and unload let's just come down here and jump in I'll take a look at the course see if we can get a hint as to where he's going yeah he's gonna go down to the end and then come back I don't know if that's because there's a little bit in the corners down there he's got to try and pick up or what's going on but either way we're a little over half full I'm hoping between this combine and the other one that should be also about half full, we'll be able to uh, top off that grain cart on the way back. I'm also curious if I have the right settings on for course play where this guy is going to not try to cut this corner and run into the fence and the tree and everything else. Be interesting to see how he handles it. Looks like we're going to be smart enough to follow around on the headlands, which is awesome. So let's just wait for this guy to get into place and we can start unloading. And here we go. Let's see how this does. Go ahead and try and match speed. Takes a second to get this uh, grain cart moving. It is full, that's for sure. I am actually kind of surprised that we are managing to keep up with this. Um, we're, actually, we're not keeping up with this. I'm losing a little bit of speed. Probably because I'm in the wrong gear for pulling so much weight. This combine is just booking it. We're going to go up to the high end of 8 miles an hour here to try and keep up. Craziness. I think I'm slipping a little bit on the tractor. So it says I'm doing 8 miles an hour, but I'm really not. Because I'm pretty sure the combine's only going uh, high end of 6 or 7 when it's harvesting. I'm not sure though. But I have uh, set my tractor to go in 8 miles an hour, and I just can't seem to keep up. I guess I'm in the wrong gear. But even so, I'm set to 9 miles an hour, and my guy's only going 6. We have to give him some extra gears. I don't think the combine's empty. I think it's that I can't keep up. Interesting problem to have. Interesting problems. Um, I guess the combine is pretty well empty at this point. We've got enough for about 50 more bushels. I think that the other combine's catching up with me soon. So I'm going to pull over here and try and catch him before the end of the field. We're 
barely able to steer with this thing. I uh, Do I have front weights on this? I do have front weights on my tractor. It's just not enough. Look at that. My front tracks are coming off of the ground. This thing is so full. So we're going to have to uh, rethink our decisions on filling this thing up to at the brim in the future. This was not a smart idea. However, we had to try it, right? It's uh, one of those things. And it looks like my combine is getting stuck on the fence on this end of the uh, field. I'm hoping he starts to back up here in a minute. We'll find out. All right, it's been a couple minutes. He's not moving. This is unfortunate. I wanted to get rid of this fence anyway, but I didn't want to have to do it mid-episode right now. So we're going to just hop in here. I'm going to do this manually. We've only got a couple more turnarounds in this section to handle. So it's not the end of the world. There he goes. And oh, we're missing the unload opportunity. No, come back. We're not going to make it, are we? Maybe. Oh, it's close. It's close. It's very close, but he's running into me. I'm going to try and uh, keep getting out of here. Oh, it's a mess, folks. It's a mess. All right. Well, we've managed to free ourselves. I don't know why we're having so many struggles today. It's been nothing but uh, pain and agony here on the farm. We're going to let the crazy combine driver start working its way back down the field. I'm going to go up to the farmyard. We're going to get this monster of a grain cart emptied out. And then I'm going to set it loose again here because I want to go check in on our tillage down here. It looks like it's still moving. It's doing the long uh, crazy bits down there right now as part of the headlands. So I think it's going to work successfully. Uh, normally, I guess I set that tillage equipment up to do the headlands last. Uh, so, I, so that's a little bit different this time around. So... I just want to go check in on it and make sure it's not going to get stuck down at the end uh, once we get things moving. However, we have to get this a big cart of grain up to the farmyard first, and this is the biggest of the 9RXs that I can get, I'm pretty sure, right? We're in a 640, and we're barely, barely able to pull a fully loaded... 2850 around. I don't know if this is just the tracked version struggling here for me or if the wheeled version of the tractor would have the same problems. I'm kind of curious to switch implements and try it out at some point, but the simple facts are that we're struggling. We're not doing well on getting this thing around. I'm going to gear back down here. Obviously, it works a little bit better when you're in a lesser gear, but then our top speed seems to be getting capped pretty hard by uh, by things. I'm going to let this guy keep unloading here. I think instead of trying to move the tractor around, I'm actually going to pull the truck forward. Got my wheels spinning on this balzer. Front hopper's almost empty. We're going to have uh, at least two semis to unload out of here, I think. And just looking in the production chain window, uh, we did finish processing all of the corn from the previous fields here. Uh, so dumping this in, we'll be able to keep things moving in the corn dryer. Want to keep that active. I think after we get started here, it's not going to have uh, any lack of materials to process. We should be able to keep it pretty full as we work our way through the rest of the corn on this field. Pull this right on through. I'm not even sure which of the hoppers I've got selected. It looks like probably the back hopper. Let's switch that up to the front. And there we go, we're unloading some corn. I like as soon as I started getting some corn in there, you can see the corn dryer. Oh, well, maybe you can see, let me jump out here. Uh, starts going, you can hear it going, but you can also see the like heat waves and stuff coming off of it, which is kind of cool. I think it's supposed to have a little bit of that orange dust around it from, I'm not sure if that's just the sun reflecting off of it, or if that's supposed to simulate the corn dust around the dryer. But 
that was a neat effect to see kick into place there. And I'm going to just run this semi right back around and under the grain cart. And I, I think the combines are probably going to be getting full soon. So I'm trying to uh, make sure that we whoops, get this going and I can get back out there with the grain cart. Now, the other thing I could do is I could set course play off to drive the grain cart out to the combines and take over grain carting for us. However, I'm kind of worried that it's not gonna be able to handle it very well, uh, given the, how big the grain cart is and the articulated tractor, the slippage that we're getting, especially once we start to get full. So there's a lot of factors there. And we should come up just a few percent short of a full load since this holds just a little bit more than uh, the 1400 and we got a 2050 I, I forgot to look last time but yeah we uh, we essentially hold two semi loads of corn apparently uh, bumped into the hitbox on that ladder a bit there my bad while that corn's unloading, we can hop over to our tillage here. It looks like we finally started on the up-down rows. Uh, everything's looking great on this field, actually, so no problems, no concerns. Uh, glad we're able to start knocking this out. And as expected, this guy is getting stuck on this headland again. I actually kind of forgot about that while we were doing everything else. Here I was thinking we were going to be getting full on the combine soon and instead we're just uh we're just getting stuck on the fences but that's fine we're cutting through we've got this last bit of lands area over here so i can go ahead and start him off here and the other combine should start moving and catch up here shortly unless it's already full it's looking like it's pretty well full uh yes we are at 99 percent what is going on over here? Looks like we once again had an issue with drivers uh, getting all out of whack. I don't know why we're in the middle of this guy's house, but I'm thinking that whatever insurance we've got is going to go up after this incident. Like seriously, I don't even understand what was this guy thinking. Should have gone up and around and turned back into this path there but I like so I want to start him off on this headland bit but if I start him up there I think he's going to start on the actual headland so instead I think I need to start here all right crisis averted folks I'll pull this semi forward now just a bit get the back hopper emptying out and then let's see if I can get out into this field and get these combines moving again my goodness it's uh it's always a lot of fun trying to figure out some of this stuff right when I think everything's working according to plan is when we usually run into the most issues so I need to just stop saying man everything seems to be working really good what's fun is that we've got four headland passes here which is more than enough to turn around. But because of the way that the course play uh, handles turning on the headland, it tries to go as far out to the outside as you can. So we're running into that fence, even though if the combines would just turn uh, a foot earlier, we wouldn't have any problems. I wish there was a, a better way to handle that, but unfortunately, I don't think there's a whole lot we can do with how close to the fence uh, things are planted on this field. I suppose we could always add a little bit more grass to the outside edge manually with some uh, painting tools. But who wants to go through all that effort? You know what I'm saying? All right, let's see. I'm going to pause here. We're going to let this guy finish emptying out. He's just got a few more bushels. The other combine is almost around ahead of this guy, though. So I don't want to pause for too long. Get things all mucked up. Uh, zip over here. I'm going to see if I can go down here and catch up with our other combine. That guy's got to be getting full soon, too. He's been cutting through and doing multiple rounds and all that good stuff. We don't have a lot of room, though. I'm not sure I can turn this big thing around in just 24 rows. This might have been a major mistake, folks. 
I forget that I'm driving with this massive grain cart sometimes. It's just uh, not just big like width-wise and height-wise, it's long as well. Which is going to make this really interesting. Yeah, we're getting closer to full. It's 80% because the lights are coming on. Oh, we can. Oh, we took out a row of corn over there because I hugged to the side a little bit too much. That's my bad. We could have done it without uh, killing any corn if I'd been just a little bit more careful. Oh, uh, well, at least we know for next time. There we are. And unloading. This pipe is rather long for a. 12 row head it's the bean head that we're compensating for here try to stay on the outside without getting so close that i crush into the other combine no don't put your pipe out man what are you thinking we're still unloading pretty quick here i think that the hopper on the combine is oh there it is just now getting emptied which is great we're already at 900 bushels of corn, though, just while we were checking in on everything else, which is is great. We've got a ton of corn, but I'm going to let this guy sit. I don't think we need him for anything. I wonder if this thing, I was wondering if this thing actually counted as kind of like a pressure washer where you could pick up the nozzle and spray stuff with it, but apparently not. Uh, maybe this side? No, not so much. It would have been cool if uh, this thing had, had a like mobile or washer. Or even if it's, I think it's supposed to be an air compressor. Uh, maybe it's it's definitely got more of a water tank on it. Um, it would have been cool if you could actually use it off the side of the grain cart though to wash things down. We've got to go ahead and move this semi back out to the side of the field though because we are going to need to unload again here soon. And like I said, I'm not going to wait for the uh, grain cart to get completely full again in the future. We'll come over here as soon as I've got 1,400 bushels or so. So we get that into position. And then just uh, double checking, we're, we're almost done. We got to go down to the very end down there for one last bit, I think, to clean up some spots that we missed. And then just checking in on our high speed tillage. We're making tons of progress here. We should be ready to start on the headland passes in no time. We've got 28 minutes left on this field, though. Uh, that still surprises me. I guess the headland passes are going to take a while. It's a pretty big field over here. We're going to go ahead and take over for this guy because there's just not that much left to do. And I think I can probably do it just a little bit quicker if we hop in here and give this guy a few more gears. All I need to do is take out this little spot at the very end. It's a single pass for us here. Perfect width of our implement just about, I think. And there we go. I've got it all, both sides. And the next thing, we just have these two smaller fields that we need to do. So I'm going to take this right on up to the edge of the field, get a little bit of that area that we missed. And then let's go ahead and just pop over into this field and get going on it. Uh, we, we don't need to use course play for this field, though. It's so small. Uh, it would take me longer to set course play up and deal with any potential... Uh, hiccups with the fence line up here than anything else so we'll just do it ourselves we'll see if we can avoid any major crashing into uh, fences and other objects i'm gonna check is there a fence there there is a fence there so let's see how good of a job i can do a back and square into this driveway hopefully oops we thought i lifted that up my bad we're going to not break any shanks off, hopefully. That would be the best thing for us to avoid right now. And I'm going to just sneak myself back here all the way up to the driveway. There we are. And dropping it down. Perfect. I suppose since we are going to have a couple of rounds here. I'm going to grab our GPS track real quick. Pushed a handful of the wrong buttons doing that. That's okay. And I'm off by like a 
three inches here. That's all right. We're going to live with that. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this headland pass up real quick. And then I want to go back over and make sure the combines are running without too many issues. Again, we've been running in defenses and such over there. Plus, I always underestimate how quickly they can fill up on corn when I start working in on another job. Corn being a high volume crop. So there we go. We've got the angles all done. I'm just going to point us straight into the next row uh, so that I'm all ready to go when we bounce back up here. There we go. And see our high speed disc is made it up to the corner here, which means it's going to pivot onto our uh, headland rows uh, very, very soon. So here we go. I'm going to pause here just in time oh oh it's just sneaking around that fence post look at that i'm excited we didn't have to have any issues and try and catch up with it it's such an awkward path that it follows to do what it's doing we're gonna run over here the lead combine is almost caught up with the uh other combine so it's it's funny combine one is supposed to be the one out in front but because he's coming in right behind it looks like combine two is the one in front however it's uh it's the opposite it's that combine one is almost a full round in front of combine two hopefully that doesn't cause us any major issues on the end rows and stuff here i don't think combine one's gonna wait for combine two to get out of the way the same way they would do in reverse i don't know if the convoy mode is smart enough for that and i'm gonna just unload him as long as we're here and then i'll catch up and try and unload combine two on its way back up the field towards the farm i don't know if that's going to do enough to uh fill the semi or not but it'll be close we're already get almost 1200 bushel and I only need 1,400 bushel to fill up the semi. There we go. I think we've got all we need out of the Combine 1. We're going to bump gears here a little bit. And it looks like the other Combine is turning on the headland right now. So if I just find a nice spot here, I don't need to turn too sharply to get pointed it back in the right direction we'll have plenty of space to unload on the go as long as that combine isn't full yet uh, i think it'll make its way down here and it looks like our drain tile ended up right in between the headers that's perfect here comes the combine we better get our butts moving i don't want it to get ahead of me again Oh, and we're getting way too close with this big grain cart, so I'm going to try and eke my way back over to more of a center line. We're definitely going to have enough to go fill up that semi, so I'm going to go uh, start getting my auger unfolded here since we're so close to the farmyard. Should make it uh, nice and easy for me to zip over there as soon as we got the combine unloaded. And I'm just curious to see, I don't think this drain tile has any collisions on it, but just for the sake of posterity we're gonna make sure perfect everything seems to be working fine we are uh done emptying the hopper on that combine so let's zip on over here and see what we can do to get this semi all filled up again this will be our third semi load into the bins off of this field so far and I'm looking at what we've got left. We've probably got at least two more semis, I would say. Uh, we'll find out. All right, here it is. Oh, 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 we still break hard. I guess we're filling the back hopper first, folks. Oh, it shows tonnage underneath the, uh, what do you call it? The speedometer there it shows my total tons. Obviously, counting down, it knows the vehicle is 25.9 tons. And uh, the rest of that must be the combination of the corn and maybe the implement. Maybe the 25.9 tons is the grain cart. I wonder if I push G to switch between the tractor and the grain cart. No, it doesn't give me a different value. Interesting. Well, I don't know what the difference between the 25.9 and the total numbers are. Uh, but you can definitely see the grain uh, weight going down there. We're at 49.3, so I suppose I could figure out what the total weight of that corn is in tons by 
uh, remembering that number and then seeing what it is after we fill it up with corn. But we're not going to fill this thing up again. We've got just a little bit of uh, corn left in the hopper here, actually, uh, from emptying everything out. We didn't quite have enough to put it all in the semi. That's all right. I'm going to just leave this guy here. We should have enough to do a couple of rounds with the combines. I might as well get the corn dumping into the bins and keep this machine moving. I do need to get back out and finish up the tillage in that cornfield as well before I forget about it. I have a tendency to get to the end of an episode and you tab through all my equipment to make sure we've shut it down and I find that, oh yeah, we were doing a job and we just never got back to doing that job. I get the front hopper emptying out first and while we uh, empty this back hopper, let's just take a hop into the menu and see what we've got. I'm pretty sure these numbers are accurate despite the save screen blocking me. We have another 3,183 bushels of corn waiting to be dried. We've already dried more than that. So we're coming in a lot higher than our soybean yield as expected. We've got a lot more corn planted and we still have 532 gallons of propane. So I don't need to buy any more of that just yet. It seems like we'll have enough to keep things running for a while. I always like to keep my eye on that though, just because I don't want to be running out of propane and come down the road to find that we ran out and we still got a bunch of wet corn that we can't sell at the store anywhere. I've done that before, I feel like. And this seems to have been a good place to park the truck so far. We'll see once the combines start trying to turn around on the headlands here, whether or not that is a problem there. And then just checking in on this, it's not even half full. We'll make the cut through no problems with our lead combine here. And unfortunately, combine two's got a bit of catching up to do. Checking in on our uh, worker here, though. It looks like the headland passes have started. I'm pretty sure that's what we're working on. And it's just going to town, 14 miles an hour here, knocking the acres out, which just leads us to needing to finish knocking out the tillage here. So let's oh, get that drop down. We'll keep moving here. Uh, finding the right gear for doing this is probably 15 seems about good. We're not running the RPMs too high. It'll give us a little bit of extra speed on the end rows when we're turning around without having to shift a bunch of gears. And I do have that small cornfield over by the dealership that we're going to have to go tackle with the uh, deep tillage here or the uh, chisel plow. This is set up to count as plowing uh, so that we can uh, get rid of that plow debuff that happens when you're uh, working on cornfields. I do love this implement though, not only because it's so wide, but it uh, raises and lowers pretty quickly. So there's not a lot of delay when you're trying to make your turns on the headlands and such. You can really uh, get it up out of the ground, make your turn and get it right back down into the ground real quick without missing a lot of ground or struggling with anything. Uh, in hindsight though, I probably needed more than one headland pass on these fields, even though they're small fields, because I'm having a heck of a time getting turned around, especially with the angled rows here. So I'm just going to back up a bit. Oops, we meant to throw that into forward gear. And I'm just going to turn right back in on my existing lines and no reason to get fancy at this point. We don't have that many rounds left to tackle. Our combines are probably getting ready to empty again, but I think I'm just going to finish making the tillage rounds here because I'm here and they're not going to take but a minute. It's a lot easier to do some things when you're already all fired up. Thought I was gonna miss a little bit for a half second there, but we got it, we got it. And this should be our last pass. I'm just watching this thing scrape into the grass there. I've got it raised, so it shouldn't be doing anything terrible to our ground, but it looked like it was uh, quite literally ripping the grass off of the field for a second there when we were turning around. I don't know what was going on. We're going to fold up our 
implement and get this sent back up to the farmyard. I don't think I need it. Oh, no. I See, I'm already forgetting. We got that little cornfield right up by the shop to do. So I'm going to drive this over there and then we'll pause for a minute while we take care of the harvesters. Uh, and then we can knock out the little field next. It, it's not going to take very long, not with this massive uh, chisel plow. Yeah, as expected, uh, Combine 1 is getting pretty close to full here. I'm hoping that he can make the next round and I can unload him on the way back down on the other side of the field. Looks like Combine 2 is still... Uh, a full pass behind the lead combine. I don't think there's a lot I'm going to be able to do to help him catch up other than just make sure that he can keep moving and not fall further behind. I suppose if I'd been in position a little bit uh, quicker here, I could have unloaded combine two and then unloaded combine one. But with the way this is going to work out here, I think I'd rather hit one than two because they're all lined up. Uh, you know what? Maybe if Combine 1 gets full and pauses for a minute, that's not the end of the world. We're going to zip down here, and zip is a relative term with this giant grain cart. And we're going to start with unloading Combine 2 on the way down here. And then maybe Combine 1 will get full and pause for a few seconds. And that'll let uh, these two workers kind of catch up with each other in the more appropriate way. Because right now my worst fear is that I'm busy working on something else and Combine 2 gets full. But Combine 1 keeps going and uh, it just plows into him and we make a giant mess of all the course play courses. We are unloading. I love it making great progress on this uh, playthrough so far. Harvest has been going uh, pretty well, all things considered. I know I said I was going to stop saying how well things are going, because that's when they tend to go wrong, but I'm I'm happy. Things are, things are going good. We've got a decent sized farm as well. Uh, it's not huge by any standards, but uh, we had some big fields on this farm, uh, and I feel like the uh, we're, we're keeping up with them pretty well. We're not sitting here doing just one boring job either. I love when we can get multiple things going on on the farm and I can kind of bounce around in between a few different jobs. And we've really been able to pull that off in this series so far, I think. Uh, and that's saying something given it's an arable series. Usually with animals, there's always more things to do than you can keep track of. But when you're just growing, especially just two crops, corn and beans on a rotation like we've started off doing, um, yeah, I'm, I'm liking that there's so much to do and we seem to be managing it pretty well. The lead combine here is almost full. I'm really hoping to get him before he stops here. Uh, mostly because if he stops right now, he, I'm going to shoot right past him. Don't know that I'm going to be able to stop this big grain cart going downhill like this. But it looks like we caught up just in time. And we are not quite going to have enough to fill a semi, I don't think. This is going to put us at like 700 bushels, maybe? No, oh, it's still going. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll get up to 900 bushels, actually. The 800 mark is coming up here. 836 before it starts to slow down. Well, I'm just going to follow him to the end row as long as we're here. He'll be nice and empty. We didn't uh, let him sit and get full at all. I was kind of expecting him to be full by the time I caught up with him there. But it did not happen, so he's still right on the tail of combine number two. That's all right. It hasn't been a problem yet, so I guess I'm uh, worrying about it for nothing. We'll go ahead and unload a little bit more of combine two since I'm right here in the driver's seat right alongside him. No sense not uh, making sure both of these guys are fully empty. I'd rather have Combine 1 be a little bit fuller than Combine 2. And then all I've got to do now is the tillage on the small field and go check in on our high-speed disc and we'll be in a pretty good spot. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this guy right here in the middle. That way I can jump back to him and handle whichever way I need to go. And our high speed disc is still out here going around. We got seven minutes remaining and he's about to start his final headland pass, which is always exciting. Hopefully we don't run into any terrain on the outside edges of the field, but 
generally this guy's been working pretty good. We haven't had too many problems. So that just leaves knocking the tillage out here on this field, which we're going to do. Uh, and we're just, we're not even, I don't even think we need to do up down rows on this. This piece of equipment is so large by the time I go around this field twice, which I did determine we need two headlands with this uh, chisel plow. We're going to be set. So let's see if, if two full rounds is enough to completely knock this field out or not. like we didn't quite get it done in the two headland passes we had to make a uh, another couple rounds here in the middle but we've got it all done so i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing folding up we're gonna bring it right back up into the yard we'll get this all cleaned up but uh not before we have to do the tillage on the big cornfield that we've got going on right now uh but i'm not gonna start doing tillage on that until after we get those two combines off of the field i think it's just going to be too much having that many pieces of equipment or too much risk of running into stuff however it's a little bit uh, scary going alongside this uh, train here flying by us with this big piece of equipment unfortunately it means we can't get this across into the farm we've got a little bit of a wait oh it looks like the end of the train's coming we'll get by here and one of these times i'm gonna get uh, clipped by the train and that's gonna be a fantastic uh end of uh video blooper but luckily that hasn't happened yet in the series we're managing to do things without crashing into uh too many moving vehicles now in part because i did turn off the traffic on this map we kept running into cars with the auto drive courses and such so sometimes i like to leave the traffic on because the map does feel a bit empty without them but unfortunately on this map i think we've kind of opted to not do that so let me move this here into our yard i don't want it in the way though i'm trying to figure out where the best place to put it is because we are coming through on the driveway with the grain cart i think it maybe what we'll do is i will pull it over here as if we were gonna wash it maybe we will give it a quick wash i don't know if we run that into uh having some free time we can worry about that but right now let's head on out here we're gonna grab this grain cart and see which combines need to be unloaded i'm not sure i'm gonna catch this guy before he gets to the end row but i'd really like to just because i'm kind of curious to see if we've got enough to load up the semi again but I also don't want him to stop harvesting. I kind of want him to keep moving. I guess we're going to go do it on the go. I'm going to spin around. I'm going to get out of his way. We'll unload him on the way back down. He didn't look that full yet. So I'm not worried about him uh, stopping. And if the other combine stops, I don't really care. That'd give him a chance to catch up. So here we go always hugging a little bit too close to the combine here i guess i'm just used to a shorter pipe try and uh, get over here maybe and find the right gear to keep up maybe 11th gear will be or good perfect looks like i've got the bulk of him emptied i'm gonna go ahead and pause here we'll let the other combine catch up with us and i'll unload him as well and we should have enough to get that semi moving again he's making the headland turn now and i can't see our high speed tiller anywhere he might be down in a, a valley over by the trees over there oh i can see him just in the distance there he's starting to make the turn i think he's still moving he is not moving well that's okay we can get him moving he ran into shock and surprise a fence I don't want to miss my other combine unload, though, so I'm trying to do this quickly. 
There it is. And start. Perfect. Two minutes left. We're all lined up. And I'm back into my grain cart. Oh no! The other combine's cutting in on a new course. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but he probably needed to be unloaded before he did that. Unfortunate. We'll see. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and unload this guy as long as I'm here with nothing to do. And then we'll worry about if our lead combine got full and needs to be unloaded deep into the middle of the field or not after, uh, after it happens, I suppose. I think my plan is going to be to follow the combine down and see if he had to cut in somewhere. Uh, and if he didn't, he's going to need to be unloaded on the way back up anyway because he was getting full enough that I could see the heap when he was turning around. So down we go. You can see the row crop ready rows with the little bit of a bigger gap right there, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it means that we're a few rows off on the course play course that's okay everything generally seems to have been working great with harvesting on this uh, it felt more or less realistic even if you can notice situations like right now where we're off by a few rows uh, when you're just going on the up down rows it it doesn't really it, it, you don't notice so uh, in general i think the uh, use of course play with row crop ready has worked out better than I thought it would uh, even on the planting side so in the future for players that are interested in playing on row crop ready maps and using that equipment uh, I wouldn't be afraid of setting course play up and using it with it um, I think course play does a good enough job of uh, handling its uh, implement raising and lowering and, and how it positions things uh, realistically enough that the rows end up looking probably as good if not better than those done manually at least by myself. The trick here is not to crowd into the other row and knock over a bunch of corn. We weren't as full as I thought we were going to be. I don't know why I thought there was so much more corn in this combine than there actually is but we're almost done emptying it out. We'll have enough to top off the semi when we get back up there, which will be awesome. And it looks like we're all filled up, so let's get moving. I want to uh, finish this field this episode. We've still got a few more rounds, but we're just about done. Uh, I'm gonna take this back up. We're gonna get the semi unloaded again and we'll go check in on our high-speed tillage. And it looks like our tillage was actually done up here. We didn't even notice the reach the end of your uh, job message there. Uh, pleasant surprise. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out, and we will bring this guy back up to the farm here as well. Um, I'm tempted before the end here to try this out. I don't think we're going to have enough... Uh, corn to fill that big grain cart back up, but I was would be kind of curious to see what a full uh, Balzer grain cart would do with the wheeled with these big doubles out on the sides and stuff if this one would handle that any better Than the quad track was handling it So we might see we might make a switch just to play around with it if we end up getting a decent amount of corn in that grain cart However for right now, let's go ahead and send this guy back up to the farmyard I suppose I can actually do it this way just to make our lives a smidge easier. And yeah, we did just finish emptying this out. I kind of forgot that uh, I'd done that. So there's definitely no way we're going to get a full balzer before the end of the field. So there's probably not a lot of point in trying it out with the other tractor at this stage. I'm going to bring this guy down here. I'm almost thinking... I'm trying to think where this is going to end. Um, let's jump over to a combine real quick. It looks like we're going to stop up on the top end of the field. So I won't need to empty this guy until he gets up uh, to the top again. And combine number two has got a few more passes. I probably need to empty combine number two one more time. So what I think I'm going to do, we're going to empty combine two on the way down this way towards the farm. And then it should be able to make the final round without any more interaction. There's not a full set of rows to my right here. 
So it's not like we're going to fill up a ton on the second pass or the second round here before we finish. Um, so here we go. I'm just going to park this right in here. We'll let the combine catch up and get it unloaded. Looks like our tillage is just coming back up into the yard there. There's the message. So we've got all of our equipment back up at the farm now, I think, which is great. we got to do a little bit of uh, cleanup here in the fall, get all our equipment washed up. I do have to do tillage on this field still as well. And I wanted to start looking into anhydrous. And I, I don't know... Uh, how they do in hydrus, I guess in Iowa specifically, it's been a minute. I remember we always applied ours in the fall after harvest. Uh, once the, I think it was once the ground froze a little bit. I can't remember now, uh, but we always put our anhydrous on in the fall. Most of the time, sometimes we do it in the spring. I know a lot of people do it in the spring. Uh, ahead of the planting season, but we do need to get some nitrogen into the ground and this map supposedly has uh, Anhydrous all set up on it, I think, and we are running the Anhydrous ready version of um, the precision farming on this map. I don't normally run with that because it changes a lot of other values on how precision farming handles things that I didn't necessarily feel as comfortable with all the differences that uh, I found between the two. And so that's one of those things where uh, your mileage may vary. I, I think most people assumed that the anhydrous ready version of precision farming was just the exact same thing, but with anhydrous. And that's definitely not the case. There's been a lot of other changes to it. Uh, just reading the change notes on the mod and such. So... I will at some point stop being lazy and take a look at what all those changes are and figure out if it's something that I'm comfortable with or not. But in the meantime, I'm just mentioning it in case people didn't know. It's not really that big of a deal. Uh, it's not like the uh, crop values in farm sim are necessarily that realistic to begin with. So you're not really missing out on much by using one set of values over another. I think uh, that it was some smaller tweaks. It wasn't a huge change. And I think we're close enough to done now that I'm going to set the worker off on this field. Oh my gosh, menus. So let's just see here. I wanted to start on the up-down rows though, not the headlands. So I'm going to click that and we're going to generate a course. There we are. And it is going to start way down in the corner, which is actually perfect for us because I don't want it to catch up with the... Uh, combines anytime soon not that there's that much left but this will do nicely and it looks like we're finally done with combine number one here he's waiting to be unloaded I think I'll go ahead and take over so that we can get him out of the way we can unload him real quick here we can go right into the semi actually no need to bother with the grain cart since we're right here and ready to go and just checking in as I thought this is a partial pass on the way down and we've got plenty of capacity he's gonna make it down and back so while that's going on I'm gonna go ahead and pull the high-speed disc up next to the pressure washer we'll get all this equipment cleaned up and ready to go into the shed now this is uh, something new that we've picked up since we had all our equipment in the shed for the year so I'm going to have to figure out where we're parking everything. Should have plenty of room, though, for a few more pieces of equipment. And I think before we run with the nitrogen out in the field, uh, putting an hydrous ammonia down, I might actually think about switching uh, things out. I'm still on the fence. I think we might move to the non-row crop ready version of this map uh, for the next game year. I think I want to keep my progress but just switch off of row crop ready and see what the performance difference is going to be uh, between the two because um, I'm not looking forward to getting into planting season again with uh, how poorly that affected our frame rates. I know several people were like, well, you could just run smaller planters. Dude, I ran two decent sized planters and it still took 
a long while to uh, knock out all of these acres. Running smaller planters is just going to take even longer. And yeah, I could run just one planter instead of two. That would also improve performance. But once again, it would take forever to get things done. So I'm going to back this thing up here into the shed. Um, I think I'm going to try and put it over closer to the planter because that other piece of tillage equipment is even larger and going to be a little bit more unwieldy to back in. So this will fit perfectly. And I'm just now noticing that uh, the refill trigger icon for our uh, fuel tank is inside the shed now. It's an interesting place for it, that's for sure. That's all right. It provides some lighting inside the shed here. We'll go with that. I am going to leave this disconnected. I just wanted to get it a little bit more uh, in the shed, closer to the planter there, so it's not blocking the way. I like it. And this combine should be able to get to the end row without needing to be unloaded. So I'll go ahead and grab the grain cart. We'll get this unloaded into the semi and we'll pretty much be all wrapped up on harvest here I, I want to go check on the bins once we get this corn all dumped into them and just see how many bushels of corn we've got in the bins at this point um let me think i need to get this combine out of my way we're all done so i can start folding up the header We'll start folding up the combine. I do need to wash this thing off. Look at how dirty we got. So let me sneak on up here. We'll park it right by the pressure washer. We'll get our washing done in a minute. I'm more focused on let's finish wrapping up the harvest here first. And I get a little closer with the grain cart than I do with the combine. No problems. We should be able to get all this in the back hopper, I'm thinking. There it is. We can fold this thing up. I think we're all done with the grain cart for the year as well. So that's probably going to need to go in the shed here. Um, yeah, we'll just pull it up in line to get washed. Have a nice little production line of equipment cleaning going on. So we might as well kill off the course play course. Fold up our header while we're doing this should be able to get everything unloaded though no problems there it is not sure i'll get all of this into the back hopper but it'll be pretty close 12 bushels that's uh mildly annoying but that's all right i'd rather have it than not and we'll fold our auger back in and get the combine all folded up next there we go and once again, I'm going to pull this right in here for uh, being in the conga line of pressure washing goodness. We'll get the semi fired up. I'm going to bring this guy in. We're going to get our cor uh, corn dumped into the bins. I'm watching the tillage go back and forth there. It's already on a second pass. We're going to knock that field out pretty quickly. Kind of curious, actually, how long that total course was. We'll have to check in on it before we wrap things up today. I guess the good news is the front hopper should be emptied in about five seconds. And just inch forward here, get our back hopper emptied out. We got a 735 bushels there to go. All emptied. Let's check in on the stats in here. We have started to use up a fair amount of that propane. We've only got 4,000... 215 bushels of corn that hasn't been processed. We've got 4,776 bushels that have already been dried. Very nice. Um, yeah, we're going to town. Uh, let's see. If I had 500 to 12, that'd be 5,000 to 120. And I've got less than 5,000 bushels of corn, so we've got plenty of propane to... Uh, finish up drying all of this corn so we'll leave that in there I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this truck right here since the next time we use it we'll be over the winter here to haul that corn up to market and yeah I think we just need to check in on that tillage if we jump over here it's got an hour and a half to go at nine miles an hour here which is not too bad I'm not complaining nine miles an hour is pretty good um, 
man, I'm going to have to think. I don't think we've got a lot of other work to do here in the winter uh, other than sell our grain off at some point. If I pull this up real quick just to verify, it looks like row crop soybeans is July and our dried corn is January. We're still uh, creating some more dried corn. So this value will go up as the corn continues to dry. I'll be curious to compare these two to see how much money we're making off of our corn versus our beans when the time comes. But I think that's going to wrap things up for today's episode. Next episode, um, we'll probably let this uh, go off camera a bit and we'll jump into some winter tasks and figure out what we're gonna do with the map, whether we're gonna stay on row crop ready or if I'm gonna switch out to uh, using the uh, normal version of this map. However, that's all for today. Kedrick out. <laughs>